This video is brought to you by the 3 Minute Board Game Patrons. Keep us independent by supporting us on Patreon. Kia ora koutou and welcome to this video about 10 great games I want to see back in print. Now one of the annoying things about this hobby is there are evergreen games that you can always get but there's a bunch of games that just disappear and you never get to see again. Some of these games stay out of print for ages and a really good example of this is June that came out in the 70s and didn't get a reprinted version until 2019 for a whole bunch of reasons. And that whole time there was an entire generation of people who wanted to play the game and just simply couldn't get it. And this is my list of 10 games I'd really like to see back in print. I'd really like to see new editions of these or new reimaginings of them. Some of these don't necessarily need to keep the theme they had. Some of them can be brought back with their existing mechanics and a new theme to make them possible. And other ones, I'd just like to see the mechanics updated as well. The games don't have to be brought back exactly as they were. I just want to see a version of these games, any version of these games available for people to play. And before we get to the main list, I have two honorable mentions. The first is Republic of Rome, an incredibly detailed, in-depth game about the Republic of Rome, shockingly enough. This is a semi-cooperative game where if you screw around with each other too much, Rome, Rome falls over. But it's so deep, so detailed, and so interesting, and it has so many nifty little mechanics in it that I just really want to see a modernized version. My favorite mechanic from this in particular is when the Roman army goes into the field, you represent different senatorial families. When the army takes casualties, you have a pot that has like the different senators in it and you pull out the casualties. So lo and behold, there could be a battle and three members of your family get killed because that's what Rome was like back then. And I think that just creates a really tense, interesting dynamic in a game because war means you're probably gonna lose someone from your household. The second honorable mention is a game called Dark Domains, which is this weird worker placement game I played. But the twist in the game is that you're evil minions competing for a Dark Overlord's attention. So you're actually slowly trying to corrupt the realm and make it darker and nastier and more horrible. It's far from the most balanced game I've ever played, but the novelty of it was really interesting. So that's one I would like to see come back. Right, let's shoot on to the main list, my top 10. Number 10 is a peculiar picadillo of mine. It's a game I like and that's Defenders of the Last Stand. A variant on Defenders of the Realm, which is a Mad Max post-apocalyptic thing. It's like a weird combination of pandemic style mechanics mixed with Arkham Horror RPG elements. There are gangers attacking in from different sides, trying to besiege Last Stand, and you're roving around the map, blowing them up, blowing up their bases, going on adventures, finding things, discovering relics. There's so much going on in this game. I absolutely adore it, even though it is a terrible, janky pile of mess. But it's one of those fun messes that, if you get into it, you really have a good time. The reason it's not higher on my list, even though it's a game I would love more people to play, is that it is kind of coming back in its own way, as there is a game coming out called Freedom 5, which takes a lot of the systems and a lot of the ideas from Defenders of the Last Stand and puts them in the Sentinels of the Multiverse universe. I'm really looking forward to that one. I kind of still wish Defenders of the Last Stand was out and about, but having a superhero re-theme, that's probably good enough. That said, if Freedom 5 does really well, I'm hoping it revives interest in Defenders of the Last Stand and that we might see a post-apocalyptic version inspired by Defenders of the Last Stand come back. That would be cool. Number nine is Blood Bowl Team Manager. And this is one of the many, many games that has gone out of print because of the breakdown of relationship between Fantasy Flight Games and Games Workshop. When Fantasy Flight Games had that IP, they made a whole bunch of excellent games. And Blood Bowl Team Manager is one of my favorites of them. It's a hybrid deck building game where you're creating a fantasy football team and you play through seasons of football games by using a highlight system. So instead of playing out the games in their entirety, you play cards from your deck to influence the position of a ball and score points on different highlights. So it creates the feeling of a sports match without actually simulating a sports match, which is one of the big problems with a lot of sports games. They get too granular and detailed. Blood Bowl Team Manager doesn't do that. Its focus is on managing the team. Now this game is deeply connected to its theme, but Games Workshop doesn't own the idea of fantasy football. It doesn't own the idea of orcs throwing touchdown passes. The game could be rethemed to a fantasy version of soccer or cricket or any number of games. Hell, I'd like to see a version of this with trolls playing ice hockey. Whatever, just find a theme, find a setting, find something that makes 
this work because Blood Bowl Team Manager is one of those really neat games and I'm really sad that it's disappeared. Number eight is a game that seems to appear on every single one of these lists because it's one of those games that came out years and years ago and very few people got to play. I never got to play it myself either, but I did see it played at a convention and thought it looked like a hell of a lot of fun. And that is Star Wars The Queen's Gambit. Now The Queen's Gambit is a rare thing for the time, a good Star Wars game, and that's because it does something a little different. It's all about the end of The Phantom Menace, where Queen Armadala hatches her plan to blow up the droid control ship. And that involves a bunch of battles and misdirections, and they're represented in this game, and you see this game is fought across four different battlefields. First of all, you've got the Gungans and the droid army fighting out in the plains. Secondly, you've got the fight between the palace guards and a Queen Armadala strike force. Ultimately, she's being a distraction there. But again, you also have the battle between Darth Maul, Qui-Gon Jinn, and Obi-Wan Kenobi. And if one side wins that battle too early, that means their Jedi enters the palace battle. And yeah, things go very, very badly then for the side that doesn't have a Jedi carving people up with a lightsaber. And finally, there's a space battle where the Naboo forces are trying to destroy the droid control ship. So if a Trade Federation player wants to capture Armadala so they can end the game quicker, and the Naboo player wants to blow up the droid control ship. This means you've got this juggle, four battlefields, four things going on. Uh, you've got to manage your resources across them, and it's just a fascinating and compelling and interesting game. And it's been out of print for so damn long, and we just don't see it coming back because, for some reason, no one wants to touch the prequel stuff, like when it comes to putting out games. It's all classic series and, and maybe some stuff around the Mandalorian area. No one wants to do the prequel stuff. Which I kind of get because the films are a mixed bag, but, you know, a lot of people like them. A lot of people like them. So yeah, whoever's sitting on the rights to this, consider bringing it back. There are thousands of people out there who have been waiting for the Queen's Gambit to come back. And um, I think you sell quite a few copies. Speaking of games that would sell quite a few copies, here's Spheres of Influence. Now, you may have heard me talk about this one before. It's a Risk-like game that I consider better than Risk in every single way. It's if someone took Risk and went, how can we make this into a modern game while keeping its essence? Spheres of Influence is actually a really amazing game design achievement because it still feels like Risk when you play it, but it has none of the negatives. It's fast, it's streamlined, it's engaging, it feels balanced and interesting. It is a really neat game. And sadly, it was a Kickstarter game and it's been out of print for a very long time. Now there's been talk that the guy behind it wants to do another Kickstarter and bring it back, but that talk's been happening for at least three years now. What I'd really like to see happen is for the people who own Risk, who have buckets and buckets and buckets of money to buy the design off this guy. Just go, hey, mister, you've made our game, but better. Here, have a bucket of cash, um, have the rights on this game, have the credits on this game, and put out a new version of Risk called Risk Good Edition. And I think they would sell a gazillion copies of it. Because if you are the kind of person who will buy a Risk game, you might actually like this one more. Um, I don't mind Risk, I think it's a pretty dated design, and I do think Spheres of Influence is in every way, shape, or form better. So I might be a bit biased here, but I think if the people who own Risk, who we all know have a lot and lot and lot of money, got behind this design, marketed it, it would print cash. It would print cash for them, it would print cash for the designer, and everyone out there would win because there'd be a better version of Risk on lots and lots of tables. The next game up is Shadows Over Camelot, and I was actually dismayed when I did the research for this video to find out that this game is out of print. You see, Shadows Over Camelot was one of the first hidden traitor games. It'd probably be no Battlestar Galactica or no Nemesis without Shadows Over Camelot being such a big hit. And it was a beautiful looking game. Like, if you talk about production values, when this thing came out, it was head and shoulders above most of the games on the market. Beautiful pieces, beautiful artwork, a lovely board, and just a neat game experience. Shadows Over Camelot is set in Camelot, and one person involved is a sneaky traitor who is trying to bring down uh, Camelot and lead it to ruin. And the rest of you are the knights roaming around doing stuff, but the traitor can sometimes be King Arthur, which is a little weird, but that's how hidden traitor games go. And it's got really simple mechanics. It's a really easy game to teach. I got rid of it for my collection because most people I play with are very serious gamers and we enjoyed Battlestar Galactica a lot more. So Shadows Over Camelot didn't get to the table anymore. Now, before a lot of them 
had gotten into games like Battlestar Galactica, they played a lot of Shadows over Camelot. And I can see a heck of a lot of tables out there where Shadows would be a far better fit than Unfathomable or Nemesis or Battlestar Galactica or any of those more involved hidden trader games. Dead of Winter is another one. Shadows over Camelot is the foundation game for those games. And it's a game I think would be in a lot of collections right now or a lot more than it currently is if it was still available. There's a lot of people out there getting into the hobby and Shadows Over Camelot would be a great game for them to try. Next up is Yokohama, a game I really, really dig. One of those games that every time I play it, it goes up in my estimation. Like when I first played it, I thought this is, this is a very good game. I want to play this more. And then I play it and I play it and I'm like, mm, when can I have an opportunity to play this again? Because it is such a deep, rich and interesting experience. It's just an interesting economic game with so many paths, so many decisions, and a unique movement system. Uh, it's, it's a difficult one to explain exactly what Yokohama is, aside from it's just a very fun and interesting game. But the sad thing is the English translation version was owned by Tasty Minstrel Games, and Tasty Minstrel Games uh, went under during the pandemic. Now there's a few other Tasty Minstrel games that are pretty good and all of those are now out of print, but Yokohama in particular is the one I'm really most interested in and the one I really like. Aside from being a game that just draws me in and makes me want to play it over and over again so I can unravel its mysteries, it's also a Japanese game by a Japanese designer. That's cool. And it's based around the Meiji Restoration, a period of Japanese history which is absolutely fascinating and something I've read a lot on. Um, my master's thesis was on the occupation of Japan uh, by the US in the Second World War. So I've read a lot about that period of Japanese history leading up to that. So from Meiji to the post-occupation era. And I just, I love how it brings that era to life as a game while still being a very, very chunky Euro game. So that's a bit of a masterclass on making a very heavy sort of lots of moving parts um, Euro game and the irony of calling it a Euro game when it's a Japanese game by a Japanese designer is not lost on me while still keeping that strong thematic hook. Really cool game. Really want to see another company pick it up and bring it over for an English translation because if you haven't tried it, it is a neat game and I do recommend it. Number four is Healthy Heart Hospital. Now, Healthy Heart Hospital has an interesting backstory because it was owned by Victory Point Games and Victory Point Games were a wargaming company that did a couple of games that weren't wargamey. Some of these games got picked up for Kickstarter by Starling Games. So you might be familiar with Nemo's War and Dawn of the Zeds. Uh, these are games that were Victory Point Games that became Starling Games. And then Starling Games bought Victory Point Games. Unfortunately, after buying them, they haven't done a huge amount with their back catalogue. Now, there's a whole bunch of the war games in there, including the State of Siege series, which is a set of games like Dawn of the Zeds, where you are a, a central force trying to hold off uh, different invaders. There's one about the defense of Japan from 1943 onwards. Uh, there's one about the collapse of the Ottoman Empire. Um, they're just very interesting series of historic games around collapsing empires and uh, defensive battles. And I'm a little bit off track here, but the point is, there are a lot of Victory Point games that could see the light of day. Uh, we've seen Nemo's War, we've seen Dawn of the Zeds. I think the next game from Victory Point games that needs to see the light of day from Starling Games is Healthy Heart Hospital. Now this is a cooperative game, but really you wanna probably play it as a solo game. It's a fantastic solo game. And it's about managing a hospital. And its core mechanic is this bag management system. Uh, you chuck a bunch of different colored cubes in and you manipulate the bag through the course of the game. Now the reason you want to manipulate the bag is different colored cubes do different things. So if you're trying to cure a whole bunch of patients with cardiac conditions, you want to be pulling out red cubes and then putting them back in the bag and discarding the others. So when you go around to treat those cardiac patients, you can pull a whole bunch of cardio cubes out and go, oh look, the right cure. It's clever. It's a lot of different micro decisions all the way through it, each one of them leading up to changing the complexion of the bag to increase and optimize your results through the game. It's a whole bunch of risk management. And unfortunately, it's been out of print for a while. Now, there is talk that this one might be coming back, and I'm really hoping it does. And, you know, I'd like to start a campaign to bring it back. So bring back Healthy Heart Hospital, Starling Games. Do the right thing. 
Bring back the hospital game. I, I think it will sell for you. I think people will buy it. It's a good game. And good games shouldn't stay hidden for too long. That's not healthy. Number three is Chaos in the Old World, another game from the falling out between Games Workshop and Fantasy Flight Games, but this, I think, was the best game created in that collaboration. Now, if you've played Rising Sun or Blood Rage, you've kind of played Chaos in the Old World, because Chaos in the Old World was the design by Eric Lang that informed those later designs. They're an evolution of the ideas he came up and used in Chaos in the Old World. Chaos in the Old World takes the four Chaos Gods of the Warhammer Old World and puts them into conflict with each other. And each of them has a character. It's got different goals, different powers, different strengths and weaknesses. And the interactions between the four of them are really intricate. It makes for a game experience that's just really nifty and interesting, seeing how these four different factions dance and play around each other, playing through their strengths and weaknesses. Now, this would be a heck of a difficult game to re-theme to anything other than maybe Cthulhu, but Cthulhu Wars already exist, so I'm not sure what you would do with Chaos in the Old World to bring it back. Maybe someone needs to just sign a, a peace treaty of some description between Games Workshop and Fantasy Flight Games just to bring this thing back out. It's a great game. It's, it's such a good design, and it's such a good time to play. And it's a thing that I think modern Warhammer fans would enjoy, board gamers would enjoy. It's a crossover title. And it just kind of sucks that IP and lawyers and contracts get in the way of stuff like this so often. And I think the fact that we will likely never see this one come back is a real tragedy. Number two is one of my all-time favorite games, that's Thunderbirds. Now, Thunderbirds was created as a 50th anniversary project. So I mentioned the IP was only available for a limited time and I don't think it was commercially that successful. But it's one of those games that once people play it, they're like, holy heck, this is a great game. It's a game that would have grown by word of mouth if it had been given the opportunity to do so. I somewhat think that the Thunderbirds theme may have counted against it because Thunderbirds isn't exactly a big thing in the American market. But the core mechanics of the game are fantastic. It's designed by Matt Lecoq, the guy who did Pandemic. Uh, the guy did the Forgotten Island series of games. If you've played one of his games, you'll get a lot of what's happening here. There's stuff happening all over the board. You're a crew of people who are trying to put out fires. Literally in this case, because you're the Thunderbirds. You're trying to rescue people and put out fires. But unlike Pandemic, where you move around the board and remove blocks to stop the disease, in Thunderbirds you have to move machinery and personnel into the right place to deal with the disasters. And it's that extra level of logistics uh, that are in Thunderbirds that really elevates it for me above his other games. Because in Pandemic, you, you're the medic, you go move, heal, move, heal, move. That's, that's kind of your turn. In Thunderbirds, if you're uh, Thunderbird 2, you're like, well, this turn I've got to drop off this drill to that person and then move over there and drop the submarine so they can do that. There's just so many little moving parts and you have to think three, four or five turns ahead. And I love that in the co-op. I think it could work as a disaster recovery game just without the Thunderbirds theme. And I would like to see Matt Lecoq take these mechanics and do something with them because I think it's his best design. Uh, the people I've played it with think it's his best design, except maybe Pandemic Legacy, but is that entirely his design or is that Rob Davio? Anyway, Thunderbirds. Really good game, out of print, hard to get. I gave away a copy at the start of the year because I just found one secondhand and wanted to share the love. I think it's that good a game and I think it would be really lovely to come back in some form or another. And a brief interlude now to share some of the thoughts from my patrons on what games they want brought back. Cy Dimitrios wants to bring back Space Hulk Death Angel. Dylan Burke is keen to see the decline and fall of the Roman Empire. David Bletchenden wants to see Tyrus and Euphrates and Blood Bowl team manager just like me. David Kiger wants to see Quantum and Automobiles. Martin Conrad wants to get his hands on Ja, Legends of a Drift System. And Rubens Altamari wants a whole bunch of games back. Glory to Rome, Jambo, Bruges, and Lord of the Rings The Confrontation. Robert Koenigsberg has excellent taste and also wants to bring back Yokohama, as well as Carcass on the City. Adam would like to see Middle Earth Quest return. Ryan Chambers wants to see Magic Realm, a one-of-a-kind experience return. And Jason Newell wants to see Evo, especially with individualized dinosaur meeples. And the final game on the list is a pretty obscure one if you're under a certain age, and that is Battletech Secession Wars. Secession Wars was a very flawed game, uh, but it's one that I spent a lot of my teenage years playing. If you are unfamiliar with the Battletech universe, here's a quick summary of it. At one point, there was a united inner sphere ruled by a central authority and lots of people in different planets all over the place. That all went to shit, 
and everything broke down into different warring states. And you have five of these warring states 250 years ago who were locked in deadly combat. These combats are called the Secession Wars. And the five noble houses have been bombing the crap out of each other for so long, technology has regressed in many ways. However, they're still roaming around with battle mechs. Now you've probably seen Battletech, you're probably familiar with Mech Warrior, giant killer robots that are piloted by people that go around blasting things up. Secession Wars is the big hole in a sphere game of this. It's sending regiment after regiment of battle mechs against each other in a political wargamey type sense. It has some elements in common with things like Dune or Twilight Imperium where it's a big epic space game where you can betray people, uh, send your forces to, to run amok. But what makes the Session Wars for me is the setting is so detailed, so rich and so interesting. There's so many characters that could be brought to life within the game if it got a new edition. Now the original game, as I said, was flawed. There were some pretty easy ways to unbalance it. There were some terrible cards in it that if you played them, they were grossly unfair. I think it's the kind of game that would benefit from a modern take, a modern revisit and a modern reimagining of that game. And the reason it's number one on my list is I personally would love to be the designer to do that. I would love to reach out to the people who have the rights to Secession Wars and to Battletech right now and go, hey, um, can I design that game for you? Can I redesign this game? Because I think using a lot of the lessons we've learned from uh, card-driven war games, things like Twilight Struggle, Paths of Glory, the coin series, we could make a modern Secession Wars that would be really interesting, really deep, and really fun. And bring that fascinating Battletech world to life in a grand strategy game that people will think of in the same sort of way they think of Dune, Twilight Imperium, and other games like that. I think that would be a cool design challenge. And even if it's not me who does it, I would love someone out there to look at this game, look at this idea and go, yeah, let's make this. Let's bring back Secession Wars. Let's bring this world to life and let's make a great, great game. Because all the bones are there. All the foundation is there to make something truly epic and interesting. And I really want to see that game come to life. So that's my list of games I want brought back from the dead. Let me know what you think and let me know what games out of print you really want to see back. And I don't mean stuff that's just temporarily out of print or hard to get right now. I mean games that are not coming back anytime soon. I want to hear what those games are for you. And if there's any interesting ones, maybe we can kick over some cans and rattle some publishers and go, hey, get this damn thing out. People want to play it. And a reminder, Three Minute Board Games does not do paid content. Keep us independent by supporting us on Patreon. And if you enjoyed this video, hit the notification button, like, share, and subscribe to the channel.